Welcome to my last video of 2021. This is not a soul food episode as you can see. This video took a lot of time to create because I've learned so many things this year. I've done so many things. I've accomplished so many things. I've failed at so many things this year. And I wanna wrap this all up with this video right here. So thank you for being here. And let's get straight to the point. Let's get into the top 10 most important things that I learned this year in 2021. The 10th most important thing that I learned this year was social media cleansing, the power of cleansing your social media because I used to complain 24 seven. I used to stay complaining about people posting these corny ass quotes, everyone who wants to be hurt, everyone who's pregnant, everyone who is bullshitting basically. Everybody's bullshitting on Snapchat, on Instagram. Damn near them the only, them the only social media platforms I got. And I used to complain about it and I know some people do too, but never wanna cleanse their social media. So this year I had to unfollow a lot of people and it's still no hard feelings. It's lots of people that I unfollow that I talk to still. And it's no hard feelings to anybody. I just had to cleanse it because I wanna use it the right way. I have to stay on social media a lot. I have three fucking accounts. So I had to unfollow a lot of people and I had to start following more authors, more mindset pages, and people that help me improve and make me wanna be better because that's what I need. If I'm gonna use social media, I need to use it the right way at least. The ninth most important thing that I learned this year was budgeting. At the beginning of this year, believe it or not, my account was in a deficit. My account was in the negative and my mom had to pay for that. And I thank her for that, but that just shows you how down bad I really was. My account was in the fucking negatives. I used to buy so many stupid fucking things. Like, like I bought a fucking dumbass watch. Like I bought three dumbass watches that I don't even wear no more because that's not what I value. There are so many dumb decision, decisions that I done made. I done bought so much stupid shit. At least a, a thousand, at least a thousand dollars worth of stupid shit. Like I haven't made no big purchases, like thousand dollar shoes or a thousand dollar watch or some shit, but just stuff that I didn't need. I didn't need to buy, but I did. But that just shows my growth as a person because the most expensive thing, what I spent money on the most was my bookshelf. And I really, really had a bad spending addiction. The first half of this year was really, really bad. I could not be controlled. But now I made smarter investments. I gotta make smart investments because those are the only things that are gonna matter in the next 10 years. That watch that I have, that shit probably rusted. I haven't put it on in a good two, three months because I just don't care for it anymore. I just don't care for it. It's just not a part of what I, it's not a part of what I value anymore. And with money, I'm not a root is all, what is it called? The root of all evil? I don't have that mindset because that's fucking bullshit to me. Money can put you in so many positions and a broke motherfucker will never admit that. I don't I don't get money to make me happy. Money doesn't make me happy, but I know money can put you in places to be happy and to be at peace. And so can budgeting, because budgeting is the vision for your money, and I have to have a vision for my money, because I wanna build wealth, because that's the only way I can be rich, if I'm not rich in the mind already. The eighth most important thing that I learned this year, whatever the fuck I think about can happen. I literally can and will do 
anything I put my mind to. I try in everything I do, but I never quit. And there's this thing that I hear society say all the time. It's this thing where people be like, this isn't meant for me, or this is meant for me. And I don't believe in that paradox anymore because it doesn't make sense. Because if you say something's meant for you or it isn't meant for you, you're trying to say that you're special. You might not want to admit it. Lots of people believe in the, the mindset of, oh, nobody's special. We all are the same, but them the same motherfuckers who will say, this is meant for me. God put me on this earth to do this. God put me on this earth to be this. Be whatever. And why do you have that mindset? You're basically saying you're special and you're not because Yes, you can be genetically superior like a LeBron James or a Michael Phelps. But in order to be LeBron James the person and LeBron James the legend, that's two different people, that's two different types of work ethic. And people don't realize nobody's meant for shit. You're just meant for whatever the fuck you put the work into. Whatever you put the work into, you'll be fine. The meant for me mindset, it sounds good on paper, it does. But then that would just make you worthless. I don't have the mindset of God put me there to God put me there because I was meant for this and I was meant for this. Nobody meant for shit, man. You meant for whatever the fuck you put your mind to. Because like I say, I said, I've said it multiple times. God gives you a pathway but you, 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 and me, we take the steps. You have to put the work in. I put the work in to be consistent. I mastered the ability of discipline because God gives you the pathway, but you take the steps. And whatever the fuck you wanna do, all you have to do is put your mind to the shit. And I know people throw that phrase around. They throw it around like a stripper in a fucking strip club. They throw it around everywhere, but it is true. And nobody can tell me otherwise. The seventh most important thing is the power of a plan. I have so many different hobbies. I have so many different tasks, plural, through the morning, the evening and nighttime. I have them, not because of the result, because everyone can't complete tasks. They can't do what they really want to do because they don't know why they have a plan. They don't know why they're doing something because they're so attached to the result. And that is a big problem within society. That's why instant gratification exists because nobody cares about the journey and that's why I love the power of a plan. I love having a plan. I love TTV. I love trust the vision. I love the journey, man. I love fucking growing and getting 1% better every day. I don't give a fuck about the destination because I could fucking die today. Who cares? I care about the journey, man. Like I love a plan, but I still stick with what comes. I still live with whatever comes because life ain't fair. Shit ain't meant to go my way either way. But I'm always make a way. And it's funny because lots of people don't stick to their plans. They give up on certain things. And it's crazy because when we were babies, we didn't have this mindset of quitting. We didn't. When we learned how to walk, when we learned how to talk, when we learned how to spell, we never gave up until the job was done. We never gave up until the job was done. So why do we not treat life the same way now? You literally put all the work in to walk, talk, and spell. Why not do the same thing now? Think about that. The sixth most important thing that I learned this year in 2021 was time management. 
time management whatever you give your time to whatever you give your time to whatever you give your time to will add up those numbers always add up whether you like it or not whether you see it or not whether you believe it or not time adds up the more I sit on my ass it'll add up the more that I sit on the phone with a woman I sit on the phone with anybody it adds up the more time that I spend on my phone it adds up everything adds up just like the time that I put in to make these videos just like the time that I put outside just like the time that I put internally it all adds up and I have to and I will take this time to build myself and take this time and use it as wisely as I can because I'm young as fuck, dude. I'm 19. Lots of y'all don't know that. And lots of y'all women don't want to know that. But I'm 19. And I am so young. I have so much time ahead of me. And like Drake said, what you got? Time on your hands or time on your side? And I got both. I got time in my hands and time on my side. And that gives me a really good advantage so it's on me to do whatever I can with this time that I have because in the next decade, I'm going to be 29. I'm still going to be in my 20s. So I have a lot of time to live. I have a lot of time to grow. And I love how that sounds. <laughs> I love how that sounds. But yeah, time management. Gotta love it. The fifth most important thing that I learned in life, we are now in the top five we are about to get deeper and deeper. That's what she said. We are about to get deeper and deeper into this. I'm about to go deeper and deeper. Number five is the only thing that is true in life is nothing. I live by this quote that we don't even truly know that shooting a baby in the face is a bad thing. We don't even know. And that mindset alone allows you to grow. And lots of y'all are gonna probably call me crazy for saying that. Lots of y'all are probably gonna think I'm encouraging that, which you can take it how you want. Obviously, I'm not encouraging that shit. This mindset allows you to grow. It allows you to be open to new experiences and new people because we don't know shit as much as we want to think that we know shit, we all don't know nothing. Even me. I would be perfectly fine if God wasn't real. Even though I felt it, if God isn't real, I would be fine with that. Because knowledge is unlimited and uncertainty is where you live. This world has a really 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 bad problem with uncertainty everyone goes to school because you know you're gonna get graded we go to work because we know that check is gonna come and that direct deposit is gonna bounce right in our account we go to college because we know most likely most people that go to college more people pass than not everyone is just certain with everything and Everyone gets so comfortable in the certainty. People get in relationships because they're certain. People get married because they're certain that this is the one. So you get locked in. You get locked into this comfort comfortability and you have to be fine with uncertainty, man. I figured that out so much this year. I have to be perfectly fine with uncertainty because nothing is true. The only thing true in life it's time and you die. And that's the harsh truth. And I love it. The fourth most important thing that I learned this year is that motivation has to be one of the most overrated fucking things to ever exist on this earth. I love and I fucking hate motivation. There is so much want in this world. Everyone is always seeking to be motivated. Everyone wants to motivate. 
Everyone wants to inspire. Everyone wants to make everyone feel good, but nobody wants to fucking execute. Motivation is the most overrated thing in life. Constantly seeking motivation has never got nobody anywhere. And I'm not saying that you should not want things. Of course, someone's going to say that and be, mm, so you're saying we, uh, we should be motivated? What, what type of mindset is that? That's really negative, isn't it? That's really negative. That's so negative. Please tell me when being inspired and being motivated has ever gotten you anywhere. What I'm trying to say is motivation ain't got shit on execution. Fuck your motivation. Fuck your inspiration. Like I said in my freestyle, what did I say? I told y'all the return was anticipated. Congratulations from the same niggas that was hating. And fuck motivation. Fuck motivation. I'm, about I'm about execution. execution. I got, I got many demonstrations. Why did I say it? Because motivation is overrated. You have to make shit happen. You have to be disciplined. Because I don't care if you think Tom Brady is overrated. I don't care if you think LeBron or Curry is overrated. I don't care who you think is overrated. They are nowhere near. They have nothing on motivation. Motivation is the most overrated thing to ever exist. The third most important thing that I learned this year was life ain't fair. I went from the beginning of this year broke as hell. I got my first real job. I got my first real job. I'll never forget Mapson. I'm pretty sure my cousin is watching this because we work there together. Mapson. I literally started off this year at Mapson and the first week I got fired. After the first week, we got fired brutally. A lot of people in there got fired for some bullshit that I'm not even going to explain because it don't matter. But it was very, very, a very tough situation. And I'm not going to lie. I wasn't depressed over it, but I was lost. I was lost. And two months later, I got a job. I got a new job. And... This was the first job that I ever kept after three weeks. I've had five jobs. Five jobs. Four of them I got fired from. None of them I left. I got fired from four of them. And none of them I made past three weeks. And ironically, the job that I got this year was the first job that I ever got after three weeks. And ironically, on the third week that I was there, I got promoted. When I got fired from Mapson, I got, I got lost. I didn't know what to do, but I didn't realize that that was just another opportunity in front of my hands. Because I probably would have quit that job anyway, and if I never got fired from there, I wouldn't be at the position that I'm at now. And it's insane. And what's crazy, what's crazy is, at this same job, we got our main manager, and we got two people under him. That's me and this other manager that we had, and she left. So after she left, everyone expected moi. Everyone expected me to be, to move up two times in one year. But boom, life hit me again. Life hit, and it made me realize life ain't fair because someone got picked over me because of their resume. And everybody knows the work I put in at my job. Even people who ain't even in my department know the work I put in my job. And life hit again. I lost my job in the beginning of the year. Got promoted. Side note, the first person ever, the youngest, and first person to get promoted that quick and that young. I got promoted after the third week of being there and it was the first job I kept after three weeks and I was the youngest person there. And I still am the youngest person there. But I worked hard and life hit again. I sprained my ankle as well, which 
We healing. Ah. I'm in the healing process. I'm still in the healing process, but I sprained the fuck out of my ankle, man, and that was that was hard too because I was playing basketball at my peak, and I still am at my peak. Actually, I'm even better. I'm even better now. I remember if y'all were around earlier, I cut my left. What was what? Which hand was it? It gotta be this one. I cut my hand, and that made me focus on my left hand and I got better at basketball. I had to play lighter and I had to rebuild myself so I can be better. And I'm better now than ever before. So if anybody wants to come at me, please do so. I I really, really, really hurt my ankle. I was walking around with an ankle brace. I was still playing. I, that didn't stop me from playing. Um, but I just had to slow down and be more flexible because Life ain't fair, man. I also lost my girlfriend. And I don't know if she watching this. I don't know where she is. I don't know what she doing. But like I said, last time we talked, even though you wish the worst on me, I still wish the best for you. I still wish that you heal because you definitely need to. And I have fully healed from you. So it is what it is. I lost my girlfriend. That was really, really, really hard. Probably one of the hardest things I've ever went through in life. It was really hard, but I really did heal. And that shit makes me want to just cry tears of joy because I was so attached to this woman. I felt like she was the only thing I needed. When the whole time, all I needed was love for myself. I almost lost both of my grannies. One of them almost died in a car crash. One of them almost died from Corona. I lost my auntie Tiny to cancer. So this year has been pretty hard, but it's my choice to stay down for 10, like I said, and I won't. I won't. I can't because life ain't fair. Life isn't meant to go my way. And I have to be fine with uncertainty because that's where you live. You don't learn nothing from being comfortable. My best and my worst moments in life have came from uncertainty. So I have no problem with life not being fair because that's what brings out the best in me every time. Hurt, death, losing friends, being rejected, all that is inevitable in life and there's nothing I could do about that. It's inevitable. It's inevitable. The second most important thing that I learned this year was to learn from other people's mistakes. I done seen so many people that are overweight. I done seen so many people who are miserable. I've seen so many people who have died, got killed in jail right now from game banging. So why would I continue to do these things? Why would I continue? to not invest, why would I not save my money on the OGs and the people at my job and people that I know that are older than me who have made some really bad investments, why would I not continue, why would I continue that tradition, why would I continue to be just a body in the rat race and instead try to make my own way and my own source of income so I ain't got to work for nobody because people work for 50 years starting at 20 just to be free for 10. And that's something I never wanna do in life. And it'll be sad looking at me and my peers 20 years from now. It'll really be sad. Looking at the parallels, looking at our lives, just seeing who fell downhill and who stayed at the top. And I hope it isn't lonely because I do wish the best for everybody in my generation. We all deserve to be happy, and we all deserve to be successful. But it's on us. It's on me. And speaking of it's on me, that goes in the rule number one. The number one thing, the number one most important thing that I learned this year was responsibility. 
I'm responsible for my bank account, my health, my mental state, my drive, my ambition, my consequences, my happiness, my emotions. Nobody's gonna tell me that I'm comfortable. Nobody's gonna tell me to get up. Nobody's gonna help me. Nobody's gonna help me get off my ass. There's no competition but me. I'm not in competition with politicians. I'm not in competition with the boss I work with. I'm not in competition with friends, family members, my mom, my brother. I'm not in competition with no fucking body but the man that I saw in the mirror yesterday. I am self-aware as fuck. Me being broken, me being depressed, me being upset is only from my judgment. And that's my responsibility. I'm happy to live, I'm happy to be alive, and I'm happy to grow because only I can control that. Because I am responsible, I am in control, and only me can be me. Now I got tons of content from this year. I got uh, Social Dilemma, uh, King Talk series, The Art of Youth, Self-Awareness, The Power of the Mind, power of purpose, the power of atomic habits. I got uh, the top 10 books that I've read that I just dropped. So it's all there for you. I got a whole bunch of stuff on my IG that's on you to digest. Because like I said, I said this from the beginning, I said it two years ago, this is more than just the name. There are people going through divorces, people who are homeless, there are people who are struggling with their identity. There are people who are getting taken advantage of in relationships. There are people who are being abused. There are people who are getting evicted. There are people who are depressed. There are people who are getting kidnapped. There are people who are getting cheated on. Some of them don't even know that they're getting cheated on. There's a lot of shit going on in the world and if I can just help somebody by just giving a family $10 because their daughter has an eight in days if I can just save a cat from falling down a tree and see that same cat once a month because he appreciates me. If I can help a child find his parents and all of these I've done, but I don't talk about them. I don't talk about the stuff. I don't record it because it's me. It's what I live for. This is more than a YouTube name. Connecting with the JIG is more than a YouTube name. And you will never understand that until you actually know me. You will never understand that until you actually see me. And you will never understand that until you're actually me. And you will never be me. Because only I can be me. So I guess that's something that you just will never understand. This video is a reward to me and my growth as a person. I thank me, but I also thank you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you.